we've got Yang Chapek coming on to talk about an open source upgrade to the Bitcoin mining stack. So let's give the biggest cheers and whoops and claps you can. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jan Chapek, uh, and I'm a co-founder of Brains, a company who's been operating Slush Pool for the past six years. And we're also the company who's behind the Brains OS open source initiative. And today I'm going to continue on the open source topic that has been very loaded uh, throughout the conference. And how we actually tackle the whole open source problem in our mining area. So basically, uh, last year at the Honey Badger, uh, we announced the Brains OS uh, initiative, which is uh, essentially an operating system uh, that is fully open sourced based on standard Linux distribution uh, that is intended for cryptocurrency mining devices, uh, primarily for, for Bitcoin for now. Uh, in the presentation, I would like to show you uh, what we went through throughout this year, where we started, uh, what happened, and where we are at, and where we are headed. In order to understand uh, what the operating system itself is, I have to explain a little bit about the miner itself, what a typical mining device looks like these days, and what, what open source issues we're facing. So um, each mining device consists usually of a control board that is running some uh, kind of Linux uh, image. Uh, it's communicating. Uh, with the uh, mining pool throughout its, uh, throughout its Ethernet port. And it has uh, a set of hash boards that are doing the actual mining work. Um, the protocol between the control board and the hash boards is usually proprietary and obviously not published by the manufacturers. Um, and it's the task of the control board to basically transform any work that is coming from the mining pool for such a mining device into something that the hash boards and the chips that are assembled on the hash boards uh, do understand. Um, a side job of the controller also is to take care of the health of the whole machine. So it's monitoring temperatures. It's usually controlling some fans. Um, here on the slide, you see also a central, uh, central component on the controller, which is a CPU which is usually some ARM board, uh, ARM-based uh, CPU. And typically, it may have a component called FPGA, a Field Programmable Gate Array. Uh, this component is very interesting to us from an uh, open source perspective because it contains a piece of code that's actually doing the, the physical communication with the hash boards. Um, and the problem is that the manufacturers usually keep this FPGA part closed, even though they, uh, you can download like different bits and pieces of, uh, of their firmware uh, on GitHub. You never receive uh, this component. And the problem with it, and we have faced it uh, probably like two years ago uh, during the famous ASIC boost affair, uh, it was not possible to do uh, mining with the ASIC boost feature that was present, for example, on S9 devices, just because this component was uh, preventing you to do it. Uh, we have published an analysis report on this, and shortly, magically, the manufacturer fixed the glitch. So in the whole open source initiative, we should really focus on having also this part uh, open source. Um, if we take the control board as a whole, uh, it is running a Linux operating system. In order to run the, the system, you also need some components like bootloaders, uh, initial program loaders, and so on. And these are also usually pretty hard to get from the manufacturers. So they, whatever they publish, uh, it takes quite skilled engineer quite a bit of time to get something that actually runs uh, on the miner. And the last but not least, uh, you need some mining software that's running with the operating system environment. So the mining device, device has got pretty complicated lately. Uh, to summarize this, uh, so before we had the Brains OS uh, initiative, uh, every device was running some manufacturer modified operating system. It's usually tailored from Linux. Uh, intentionally, the image is a little bit crippled because the image was usually crippled and may have contains Backdoors, 
like the Enbleed affair we had. Then they were using uh, usually a CG miner um, software to actually perform the actual mining. And the first open source problem here was also that the CG miner software was not usually being contributed back to the community. So it's a violation of the GPL. Um, most manufacturers don't care, but that's how it is. Um, and last but not least, um, the miner uh, is using the Stratum V1 protocol that has been invented uh, around 2010, 2011. And this protocol kind of doesn't fit our current industry standards. It doesn't have any uh, authentication. Uh, it is not secure uh, with regards to man in the middle attacks. So messages that are flowing through the protocol are not signed, at least the critical ones, that should prevent such kind of attack. And there were cases of hijacking the hash rate. And Finally, the protocol is not very efficient because it's running as a text-based protocol uh, using JSON. So we're wasting a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, bandwidth throughout the global network. Um, the current mining stack that we announced at the Honey Badger last year uh, was already based uh, on the open source operating system where we were able to port it to the two kind of like major devices. One of them were, uh, was uh, Antminer S9, the other one was Dragon Mint. At that time, it was coming with the uh, ASIC boost feature from the box, so you couldn't actually run the miner without ASIC boost, that's why it was interesting for us. Um, we managed to port also uh, the various copies of CG miner floating around from the manufacturers, usually very obsolete, to the operating system so that we could drive uh, we could drive the, the physical mining hardware. And uh, we were still stuck with Stratum V2. Um, the problem uh, here is that we, have, we already had all the components open sourced, except for the FPGA still. I'll explain that later. Um, however, the CG miner code base at the current stage uh, that is public uh, is not in very good shape. Usually what manufacturers do, they clone the sources, uh, make some not very uh, nice and beautiful modifications. Uh, typically they also reformat the sources to make it even harder to maintain a single code base. And sometimes they contribute back uh, something, usually two years back or so on. It's usually obsolete already by the time they, they publish it. Um, so the critical part that needs, still needs to be fixed and that's what we've been working on for the past year, is to get rid of the current CG miner and tribute to CK or Konkolevas, who is the original author, uh, who gave up on trying to fight with the manufacturers. So come up with some alternative that would be designed from scratch uh, using some modern programming language, and that would allow us uh, to easily extend the, the set of mining hardware that we support, and last but not least, to finally exchange the mining protocol. So here we are now, um, with the Brains OS as it is, uh, already with uh, replaced uh, FPGA code for S9, so you have an open source version of that. Uh, we have a prototype of uh, BOS Miner, we call it BOS Miner, uh, written in Rust. And uh, we're coming up with a draft of a mining protocol. This protocol uh, tries to address the major issues with the present mining protocol. So basically we wanted to address the security part uh, by providing uh, signatures and authentication for uh, critical messages in the protocol. We wanted to make the protocol more efficient, so we switched it immediately to, to binary version. And for those who know how mining protocol works, uh, we also uh, provided a way to do header-only mining. So basically this should simplify uh, the way the mining jobs are, or the solutions for the mining jobs on the mining servers are verified. It's, you know, uh, causing less load on the servers. Uh, and the last topic for, that has been also called for by the community is that there is a potential for censorship of transactions because the current mining protocol leaves the transaction selection fully on the pool side. Uh, with the new protocol, 
uh, or with a new draft, we try to address this feature as well. So miners should be able to, if they want to, uh, to select uh, their custom mining work and negotiate it with the pool so that they can work on the jobs that they believe are the right ones. Uh, today, we're coming up with a full open source package. So it consists of the Brains OS operating system. Uh, we have a BOS uh, miner prototype. Uh, along with that, since the BOS miner exclusively supports only Stratum V2, we're also providing a Stratum V2 to V1 uh, translation proxy, also kind of as a reference of uh, the implementation for the draft. And since the protocol is pretty complex uh, with regards to how all the translation use cases are going to work out, we also started a code base that should uh, target on the actual simulation. So we should be able to simulate different scenarios. That's also in the repository. And again, last but not least, we're coming up uh, with a Stratum V2 protocol draft. Uh, if you're interested in any of this, uh, up there is a URL to GitHub where the main repository resides with all these uh, software components. Uh, for the enthusiasts uh, who want to try it, uh, stop by at our booth. We have SD cards that you can run on, on S9s. Or if you own a block eruptor and you're a developer, you can just compile the BOS miner for your block eruptor and you can test it on, on the v2 stratum slash pool.com endpoint. And again, last but not least, uh, we're going to tweet uh, a link to the specification of stratum v2 uh, to GDocs. So feel free to comment and help us. Uh, we're sure there are areas that still need to be addressed. Uh, for example, we would like to have some security experts to review uh, or even help us with, uh, with the signing scheme. Uh, the topic itself is not very simple. And very similar to the work selection protocol that allows uh, miners to select their own work and to prevent potential censorship from, from the pool also needs to be reviewed by the experts from the industry. So this is it from me. Um, if there are any questions, just feel free to ask or stop by at our booth. Okay. Uh, hello. Yes, I wanted to know uh, what do you think about uh, the difference between uh, Stratum version 2 and better hash that it's the other implementation that I see recently? Uh, there are a couple differences. Um, the first and the major one is probably the way the work selection is done. Uh, for better hash, I think the, the, the basic problem that we were discussing with Matt Corella, who is the author, uh, and who is also helping us with this specification, uh, is that the pool pretty much has to believe or trust the, the miner, whatever it's submitting to it, as its own selected work. And it only can uh, prevent uh, any problems just by spot checking those, those jobs. So it's not very secure from the pool side. Uh, second part, if we look at the pure mining or the header-only mining, the differences are that we really try to design the protocol to be as efficient as possible and to reduce the, the payload of the messages. Like today's submit on Stratum V1 from one machine is about 200 bytes, which doesn't sound like too much. Uh, but we reduced it to about 20 to 30 bytes, uh, which is a significant difference. To, to put this in like real numbers, uh, currently our pool, for example, uh, flows about 10 terabytes of data per month, if I'm correct. So the reduction is immediate, and obviously the savings on the, on the, on the global bandwidth is going to be huge. Uh, I'm not saying that better hash would be like uh, about the same inefficient as, uh, as Stratum V1, but, but it was not really designed with this specific things in mind. Thank you.